guys, so I've been wanting to make this video for a while and it is going to be the differences between autism, being a late talker, and being a delayed uh, speaker. So there are differences to each, yet they kind of correlate hand in hand. So I kind of wanted to touch on it a little bit because I do have kids. And then not only that, but I have people sometimes with children ask me questions because I went to school for speech pathology. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and get into it. So for those who don't know, in high school, I was a nanny for children who had autism and so I kind of got a first look of what it's like to you know be around someone with autism and honestly I just really fell in love with everything and um I ended up going to school for it learned a lot about it I was very confident in my skill in being able to determine you know who has autism as far as like a child um, as well as if they're a late speaker or um, if they're delayed uh, so with that being said, now I have children and sometimes, you know, I question things that I've learned and it can get a little hard when it's with your own kid, you know? So I thought I should make a video and talk about differences and, um, you know, we could all just have a discussion together. So as far as our autism goes, it's so popular nowadays, you know, it seems like it's just becoming more of a norm. Um, but with autism there's a spectrum and depending on where you are on the spectrum will determine whether you have it mild if you're like severe if you're on a moderate level of the spectrum and everybody's different when it comes to autism you know you have nonverbal speakers and then you have uh people with autism and they speak completely fine you know it's just it just really all depends on where you are on the spectrum but some ways to determine whether your little one has it early on is if uh, they're not making eye contact with you so if you're saying their name and they're not making like direct eye contact um, another way is like lack of emotion um, so if they're doing if they're not showing certain emotion uh, so I don't know what's an example uh, like Troy is very shy so if I say Troy and he's in front of people he'll go like this which shows that he's like really shy you know shows little personality cues like that sometimes when you have autism that won't matter if you're around a, it doesn't matter who they're around like they don't show like that personality factor you get what I'm saying that emotion factor um so that could play a part as well uh uh late uh the, the delayed speech too uh, could be a factor in it and this is why I wanted to do this video because sometimes with autism and being a late talker and speech delay they all kind of come and correlate together because they say that your child should be saying certain amount of words by the age of two and three and four and five and six you know there's this board and it tells you how many words your child should be saying by this age how many words your child should be saying at that age and Sometimes parents will think that something's wrong with their child because they're not saying that amount of words or they're not saying enough words or words at all. And sometimes they could just be a late speaker. They could know everything there is to know and be a late speaker. Now, um, I'm sorry this video is all over the place, but if you have a, a little one around and you have siblings around your little one's age, so if you have like a toddler and another toddler uh then then your little one will speak earlier usually i don't know if i'm making sense like if your toddler has siblings then most likely the toddler will speak a little earlier or faster or be on point and that's because they're learning from someone closer to their age you know rather than having a toddler and like nobody's around the toddler they may be a little bit of a late speaker because maybe um, you're not speaking to them enough or uh, they're not around a lot of kids their age that sort of thing right and then um, with autism though uh, it, it like I said it depends on a spectrum because there's high functioning uh, children with autism but sometimes your your little one won't speak at all they won't babble they won't make any uh, mama dadas none of those cues uh, they'll just not say anything so you know just it really really all depends uh, now with Troy my personal experience with him he was saying a lot of words um, when he was gosh how old was he I think like a little after one I would say that's when he started saying little words he would say uh hi mama dada he started to say thank you and then he just pretty much stopped 
and as a mom I got worried I was like oh my gosh you know I'm, I'm supposed to be the speech pathologist and my kid is not even like saying a lot of words and but you know I started to realize okay he knows how to say certain things but he's holding himself back and it could be a number of things first of all my son still has his pest fur in his mouth and he's very very clingy to it another thing is he watches me take care of a baby and that can play a part in it too where your child sees you taking care of someone younger and they start to act like the baby you know so that happens a lot with siblings um i actually did some research on it recently because i was like what is happening with troy he started to act like aria so um that plays a part in it as well and as a mom i'm like okay how am i gonna go about this so if your um child's a late talker and how you would know is well it's kind of hard to just tell but honestly if your child's like three and under and they're not saying like too much words I really wouldn't worry about it um it's like the age at like four years old that's when you like if they're if they're four years old and they're not and they're not saying as much um then take them in for a speech evaluation um and just see you know maybe they just need a little extra speech therapy which is really really common nowadays so with all the tablets and you know um, technology out there it's been said that a lot of kids have needed speech uh, speech therapy so don't even freak out about it it's like it's a norm so uh, with me with Troy how to get your child to speak more and this is what I've started doing I actually have a huge little uh, book I'm actually gonna show you guys so this is what I have for Troy and I haven't used it yet. I'm going to actually start today. EJ and I were talking about homeschooling the kids. Um, so that's like a whole nother topic. But I, I'm probably going to do a video on it tomorrow. About how like I'm going to go about homeschooling them. But we're going to I think homeschool them for a little bit. Just to see how it goes. And like this is one of the tools that I have so far to start. And we're going to actually start tomorrow. And so um, there's like really huge things. And um this is how I'm going to like try to get Troy to talk more. I'm going to say eyes, eyes, eyes and sit him in a high chair and show him eyes, eyes, eyes and do it every single day. Nose, nose until he starts to repeat, 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 repeat. Um, now, I'm not too worried about him anymore. He is saying words like... Um, bye-bye and things like that like putting trying to put two words together which makes me a little happier but I still want him to talk way more and I want him to communicate way more so I'm gonna start working on it with him also giving options is a good way to get your child to speak more my best friend she's um, in the speech pathology field as well and she was telling me that I should do some options so for example uh, pretendies are like breakfast foods and I'll say do you want pancakes or do you want um, like waffles you know and like let them choose and try to verbally say it so uh, that's what we've been doing trying to give options uh but yeah it's it's really common to have a late talker especially if you have a boy so I, I really don't like to input like genders and stuff like that but it has been said that like boys are a little bit slower with talking so that's another factor as well but um, it is a learning process. So anyways, I wanted to make this video just to kind of give you guys an idea of the differences. And I wanted to say, you know, don't be too worried. Like I said, if you have a little one, um, usually with diagnosis of autism, you can kind of know by two years old. By two years old, if you feel as though your child's not making eye contact, if you feel as though your child's not verbally saying anything, um, if you feel as though your child's like lacking a lot a lot of personality uh, and um, behavior sometimes goes into it as well because behavior issues uh, uh, play a lot with autism at least when they're young a lot because if they're not able to fully express themselves they get frustrated completely normal right so if you have a child and they and you feel like they're exhibiting a lot of behavior issues out of frustration and they can't verbally say what they want uh that could be like a little um symptom of autism as well so i would at that point go to an early interventionist a speech pathologist and try to see because you could take them to a pediatrician i don't know sometimes they know what they're talking about sometimes honestly they, they really just don't know um so i would just really call up a speech pathologist or i would call a early interventionists and kind of see from their standpoint what they think because they're the ones that really diagnose so 
uh, sometimes doctors diagnose, but like I said, it, they could just be exhibiting like toddler behavior. So it's really like a fine line between the two, <laughs> especially at such a young age. But that is like my experience with it. And then as far as like just having a speech delay, um, I would say like by four years old, if they're not putting two words to, or actually even three years old, if they're not putting two words together, um, they're not saying certain things, um, then maybe they have like a little speech delay. But, uh, you know, as a parent, you guys always know. So you know your child. Uh, I will give you guys an update on Troy's speech. I, am, like I said, I'm gonna start working on it with him and let, letting him speak a lot more. And if you guys have any advice for how to get him to uh, stop acting like Aria, let me know because, yeah. He took a few steps back. He was so independent and doing his own thing and now he's just not even wanting to eat himself. So it's been a little struggle, but I'm working on it with him. And like I said, I'll give you guys a full update but I will catch you guys in my next video and I hope this was as helpful as possible. You know, don't take my full word for everything. If you have concerns about your little one, then I would honestly just call up the pediatrician, see if you can get an evaluation with a speech pathologist so that you can, um, you know, have that clear mind. Because if your child does have autism, you want to get them uh, early intervention as soon as possible and if they have a speech delay you want to get them early intervention so let me know your experiences down below and i'll catch you guys uh, in my next video let me know what you want to see next bye guys